Good morning, my friends, and thank you for joining me for Facebook Live. Um, Monday through Friday, we do a devotion. My name is John Phipps, and it is my pleasure to be with you this morning. Um, well, today is Friday. Are you ready for the weekend? It's going to be fantastic. I can't wait. I love our weekends. Um, that means Friday I have off. However, Dina's working. Um, so I look forward to... Um, Spending some time on my boat today. It's going to be 75 today in Florida. And I'm just getting a bunch of text messages from people. But anyway, hope you guys are doing well. So I'm going to be on the water. I'm going to get some sun and uh, work on my tan. I don't even know. Maybe I'll go swimming. Who knows? I might get crazy and jump in there. Um, that would be fun, wouldn't it? I know it's a little chilly yet. But um, not outside. Just the water might be a little chilly. Good to see you, Alan and Pam and Diana and Carrie and Shirley. Good to see you guys on this beautiful Friday morning. And um, so I was asked by special request uh, to talk a little bit about Matthew 10, 38 and 39. Good morning, Tom. And we're going to be talking about taking up his cross. Um, so we're going to dig into that a little bit, what it means to take up your cross or take up his cross. Good morning, uh, Sharon. Hope you're feeling better. Been praying for you, my friend. I've been hearing good reports that you are getting stronger every day. And I'm sure Tom is taking good care of you, so I'm glad for that. Anyway, uh, don't forget, tonight is the concert at our church. Hi, Dina. And we want you guys to come to Park Place Church for our worship concert. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. And, um, we're only starting with Matthew 10, 38, and 39, or some other scriptures, probably about six that we're going to, um, well, maybe seven or eight that we're going to actually look at. Um, most of them, in fact, all of them are in the New Testament. So um, honestly, there isn't a lot about the cross in the Old Testament, guys. The New Testament talks a lot about the cross, and we learn about the cross through Jesus. Um, nowhere except... Uh, in the Old Testament uh, that I know of, does it say um, much about the cross? One particular place says, "Cursed be any man who hangs on a tree." Um, this could mean several things, but this uh, this concept of crucifixion um, we've taught on before it was actually something that the Romans took from the Persians, and um, it was a way of humiliation and torture um, to some of the most uh, heinous crimes. Uh, or criminals. So Jesus was not a heinous criminal. He wasn't a criminal at all. Um, however, um, they decided to um, uh, broaden their view of who would be hanging on a cross. And so instead of it being the heinous of criminals, it started to become thieves, robbers, evildoers, uh, even people that they considered blasphemers uh, like Jesus. Imagine that. They put him on a cross and he had no sin. And they accused him of being a blasphemer, but he never was. And we know that because he is God. So anyway, hope you guys are doing well. We're going to get started a little bit early so we can get done a little bit early. I only got 13 people on here. And you know, Friday is our least popular devotional day. And I don't know why, but for some reason it is. Anyway, let's take a look at Matthew 10, 38 and 39. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface this by letting you know that Jesus is going into a long uh, discourse, um, basically talking about um, drawing a line in the sand, uh, that uh, brother will betray brother to death, a father his child. Um, and then he goes on to talk about, um, do not suppose that I've come to bring peace on the earth, but I've not come to bring peace, but to bring a sword. Um for I have come to turn a man against his father. Now, I know I've taught on this before. The reason why this is important is simply because... <clears throat> the reason why this is important is simply because it is a preference into... Families will be divided by the cross. Families will be divided by the love of Jesus. Some will love Jesus. Some won't love Jesus. Some will uh, follow his teachings and become his disciples. And some will despise him and his teachings and therefore hang on to either um, uh, Jewish customs or worldliness, okay? Jewish customs, those that were right after Jesus' time, 
um, they will hold on to their heritage. Or if you look at uh, contemporary times today, those that choose not to follow Jesus, they say they believe in him, but they want to serve themselves and, and fulfill their worldly desires. And cer certainly I understand that. Um, but if you look at Matthew 10, 38, it says here, whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Now, it's important to understand that the Bible says whoever does not take up their cross. Now, Jesus had a cross to bear. Um, it wasn't his cross. It was our cross. But Jesus had a cross to bear. Notice I didn't say his cross because it wasn't his cross. It was my cross. It was your cross. Um, and now that particular sign uh, or symbol has now been a representation of the Christian church, right? What Christian church doesn't have a sign or symbol of the cross? But let's make a distinction here that Jesus um, is saying that we are to take up our cross. And I want to be careful because some commentators that have been reading this morning have really wanted to make it clear that Jesus took up his cross. And I have a problem with that. Good morning, I see all your names there. I, I guess I have a problem with the fact that there is ownership of the cross that I put Jesus on. Because the Bible says he took up our infirmities and that for our trespasses, he was afflicted. He was nailed to the cross because of my sin. He was nailed to a cross because of my sin. I want to go a little further and say he was nailed to my cross for my sin. Maybe it doesn't mean much to you, but it means something to me because I don't consider it Jesus's cross. And I know that um, he didn't belong on the cross, but my sin drove him to, to the cross. But if my sin drove him to the cross and your sin drove him to the cross, doesn't that make it our cross? rather than his. So I know it's just maybe not important, but I think it's important to, to remind you that it, he hung on our cross, not his cross. Turn with me to um, Matthew 27, 31 and 32. Matthew 27, 31 and 32. And if you don't have it, that's okay. I'll read it for you. Here we are. The Bible says, uh, after they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Now, I'm gonna stop there for a moment. It's important for you to understand that carrying a cross was a sign of shame. And because we've talked about this before, I'm not going to go into great detail about the journey of the cross. Um, the Catholics refer to it as the stations of the cross. But there is a journey that is taken through the streets so that if anybody has any testimony to declare this man innocent, they have an opportunity to do so, according to historian Josephus. So I just want to share with you that Jesus' journey of carrying the cross I said the cross, not his cross. I don't want to call it his cross because it's mine. I can call it the cross. But there was a journey in which he carried my cross. And he struggled to carry it. He had already been flogged, which is beaten and whipped. Verse 32, as they were going out, they met a man from Serene or Cyrene. Uh, his name was Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross, okay? So Jesus was already beaten and bloody, and he was having a hard time carrying my cross. And so um, because he had a hard time carrying my cross, they found this big guy from out of town. He must have been a big guy because they needed someone strong to help Jesus carry my cross. And I don't know much about Simon of Serene. I don't know um, whatever became of him, um, but I am thankful that he was there to help Jesus carry my cross. 
Let's take a look at Matthew 16, 24. Stay with me. I am going somewhere with this. You just got to trust me. Matthew 16, 24. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. All right, so Jesus took my cross and was punished for my sin. And now Jesus is speaking to his disciples, okay, knowing that he's gonna take up John's cross in the future. But he's preparing them that each one of them, Peter, you're gonna take up your cross, okay? Uh, John, James, sons of Zebedee, you're going to take up your cross. Whoever wants to be my disciple, John, Peter, James, and the rest of you, if you want to be my disciple, you have to do a couple things. First of all, you need to de deny yourself, okay, of worldly pleasures, your own will. That's why Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done, certainly, and in the Garden of Gethsemane, he struggled with this. May this cup be taken from me, but not as I will, but thy will be done. So we must deny ourselves. And then number two, take up our cross. Take up our cross. Now we can look at this literally, or we can take, take this figuratively. I guess it depends. We understand that Peter was crucified head downwards. Um, that's what the theologians say. We believe Jesus's words were true when he told them the kind of death that Peter would suffer. Uh, I take that literally. Now, I know that not all the disciples were put to death with a cross. Uh, for instance, um, James, which is one of Jesus's inner close disciples, was put to death with the sword. He was one of the first martyrs, and we know that about him. Um, so I thought that was really important that Jesus is saying, you will deny yourselves, take up your cross, and then the third thing is, what does he say? What does he say there in verse 24? Follow me. So Jesus has taken John's cross. Simon from Cyrene is going to help him. And he's saying, now, now, Peter, I want you to take your cross too and follow me. You can deny yourself, take your cross and follow me. Those three things are very, very important. Can you do two out of those three things? What happens if you do one out of those three things? Perhaps you do zero out of those three things. You don't deny yourself, you don't take up your cross, and you don't follow Jesus. Well, I got no good news for you. You have to do all three things. Jesus lists them in an order for a reason. If you want to be his disciple, fine. If you don't, say so. But if you say you do, then you should do these things. Don't say you want to be his disciple and not do these things. You see? Because then you're a liar. And the truth is not in you. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Follow me because I'm taking up John's cross. Follow me because I'm taking up Gail's cross. Follow me because I'm taking up Lynn's cross. So I love that. I just love that verse. Let's take a look at Luke 9, 23. Remember, it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're looking at Luke 9, 23. Yep, I'm still wearing my glasses, giving my eyes a break from my contacts. Giving them a chance to heal. Take a break like we all need. So similarly, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. And he says the same thing in Luke. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. So we're seeing a parallel scripture, but Luke, who is a doctor and maybe a better writer, perhaps certainly more detailed, adds a word. Did you notice the word that he added there? I'll read it for you again. For whoever wants to... Where are we? Luke 9, 23, sorry. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. So it's just like the previous verse, except he adds the word daily, okay? Notice he says daily. 
Now, there was a day that I came to Jesus Christ and accepted him as my Lord and Savior. October 23rd, 1993. It was a Saturday. Okay? Doesn't mean much to you. It was a very special day. It was the most important day of my life. But Jesus is saying here that if I want to be his disciple, I must deny myself, take up my cross daily. Not just October 23rd, 1993. That means today. Daily. That means tomorrow as well. Hmm. Interesting, Luke goes one step further. Let's take a look at Luke 14, 27. So flip over a few pages to Luke 14, 27. Luke 14, 27. I'll get there eventually. And Jesus is speaking, and in Luke he says, and whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. So see what he's done is he's switched the wording around. But it's a little bit different. And whoever does not carry their cross. Again, we're speaking about the journey of when Jesus was flogged and whipped, ridiculed, right? They put a crown of thorns on him, all that. That happened before he took my cross. That happened before he took your cross. And they sent him on a journey through the streets to humiliate him. So he says now that we have to carry our cross. What is it like to carry a cross? I mean, let's be honest about it, my friends. I believe that when he says daily, that we are to carry our cross daily. We are to bear our cross. We are to let other people see our cross. Okay, I know we're not martyrs, and I'm not speaking literally. Please don't strap yourself to a cross. Don't carry a cross on your back. Certainly you understand that what I'm saying to you this morning is the world needs to see that you are carrying a cross, which is a sign and a symbol of Christianity. And whosoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Are you carrying a cross? You see, how heavy is that cross? Are you forsaking others? Are you turning away from sin? Or are you turning toward your selfishness? Because if you look at this figuratively, my friends, and, and do an honest self-assessment, taking up your cross and carrying your cross is a reminder to you every day that you are not your own. You were purchased at a price, but you are giving up your life as you know it, as you love it. You are laying it down, allowing it to be subservient to the Lord Jesus Christ. You are allowing it to be submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that cross is heavy, my friends. It's not a cross of gold. Is it proclamation or decoration? I've asked you that before. You see, I, I, I used to wear a little cross. I guess it, it was really easy to carry. It was really, I mean, it was really pretty. It was like 24 karat. It actually cost a lot of money and I don't wear it anymore. You see, I don't like anything around my neck. I don't need to worry to wear a cross to testify about who Jesus is. I told a lady who served me at Olive Garden last night how much I love Jesus and how he changed my life and he could change hers too. Let's take a look at Revelation 3, 4. Oh yeah, it's getting heavy. You know when you start going to Revelation, look out. Revelation chapter 3, verse 4. Be patient with me. This is not a Bible I use very often. So the pages are stuck together. Revelation 3, 4, please. Thank you for my scribe, Miss Pam. I have my glasses off, so I can't see your comments. That's so I can read the word here. Revelation 3, 4 says this. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. 
Now, maybe you're wondering what the significance of this verse and how it relates to the other ones that we've been talking about. Let me tell you, my friends, it does. I love this. Because Jesus says, unless you pick up your cross and carry it daily and follow him, you cannot be his disciple. So I really like this verse because I think this verse is helpful. Revelation 3, 4. Yet you have a few people in Sardis. He's talking about the churches. I know these are letters to the churches, okay? But, but listen, this is good. They have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white for they are worthy. Listen, my friends, if by the sweat of your brow while you are living, if you will carry your cross, I believe the Lord says you will be dressed in white and you will walk with him. That's a prophetic word. He doesn't say they have walked with me. He doesn't say that they are walking with me right now. He says, they will walk with me. When will they? When they're resurrected. Dressed in white, for they are worthy. Oh, that's good stuff, my friends. You see, we can either choose to walk now and carry our cross and follow after Jesus. And if we do, we will walk with him in glory with white robes. Or we can choose to not carry our cross, instead maybe have a little cross of gold, which is decoration, not proclamation necessarily, and be selfish and live our lives for ourselves and therefore not be repentant and turn from our wicked ways. Let's look at Galatians 6.14, we're almost done. So I want you to go back over to Galatians chapter 6, 14. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Now the writer is Paul, the Apostle Paul, to the church of Galatia. He says, I'm not going to boast about anything except the cross. Not as a decoration, but a proclamation. He's going to boast only in the cross through which the world has been crucified to me. So the Apostle Paul is saying the world has been crucified to him, meaning that it's dead to him. The world is not alive. The world is not exciting. The world is not tempting to him anymore because the world has been deadened. It has been crucified to him. And he said, I have also been crucified to the world. So the world is crucified and I have been crucified. In Galatians 2.20, if you would back up just a couple pages, we're gonna close with this verse. And I know that you know it. Galatians 2.20, for I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Paul is reiterating in Galatians 2.20 what he already said in Galatians 6.14. I have been crucified with Christ. Christ lives in me. I don't live in me. Christ lives in me. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me because he took my cross. Somebody said to me today, could you teach on taking up the cross? I think I have. He took up my cross. And Pam, he took up your cross. And Jay, he took up your cross. But there's still another cross to be taken. And it's still yours, and you're not going to get through this life unless you bear it. And strap it on, my friends, and get under it and carry it. If the Holy Spirit truly lives in you, then take upon your cross and realize that this world doesn't have what it says it does. 
Do not be lured away. Do not go to that which is tempting you to sin, my friends. Turn away from your wicked ways and come back to the cross of Jesus and carry it. For he has given you a cross. The Bible doesn't say that he gave you a cross to bear. You know, when people kind of flippantly say, oh, I guess this is my cross to bear. No, 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 no. No, don't make it subjective, my friends. Don't make it, don't make it about an event. Don't make it about a funny adage in which you're teasing your neighbor about your friend who's difficult. Don't make it about a child who's going through hormonal changes and therefore dealing with adolescence. Oh, he's my cross to bear. Please, please. Don't degrade the cross and make it about an event or a person. It is not simply a period of time that you have to bear in which your child goes through adolescence. It is a daily lifelong decision from the moment of regeneration in which you've confessed your sins and you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord until the time of your last breath. You have a cross to bear and it is not a person and it is not for a particular time. It is not an event. It is a lifetime, my friends. Wear it proudly. Wear it honorably. Wear it because Jesus wore it on his journey outside of the city to a hill called Calvary. My friends, that's where we're all heading. We're all heading to Calvary, my friends. And we're carrying our cross. But just at the time when we arrive, we will find that we will not need to be strapped to it. We will not need to have iron pins pounded through our wrists for Jesus has already taken our punishment and paid our debt. But my friends, the Apostle Paul says, I have already been crucified for I, my flesh has been crucified for I bring it under submission for Christ has taken my place. You may not suffer the crucifixion, my friends, literally, but figuratively speaking, forsake everything else in this world and carry your cross to Calvary. And you'll know when you get there, I promise you, because your body will give up its ghost, its spirit, its soul, and your body is like a seed that will remain, but your spirit will fly up to the heavens and you'll be forever with Jesus. To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord immediately. So my friends, I wanna ask you in closing, are you carrying your cross? Well, I did yesterday, but today I've struggled. Okay, my friends, maybe already you struggled today. Maybe already you've sinned. Maybe already you've been selfish. Maybe already you've denied Jesus Christ. Let me tell you one thing, you're not alone. Grab that cross, throw it over your shoulder and get back to it, my friends. Will you pray with me? Father, thank you for the reminder today of what the cross represents. Jesus carried my cross. He was nailed to my cross and he took my place. And he doesn't ask me to be crucified, literally, but that I and my will will submit to the Lord Jesus Christ and that my flesh will be crucified figuratively under the power of the Holy Spirit. And I do carry a cross, Lord. It's not pretty, it's actually quite difficult. It's heavy some days more than others. And sometimes I get splinters and sometimes it hurts my back and it's, it's not pretty. And this world rejects it, but I don't, Lord. I cling to it. I cling to the old rugged cross as the song goes. I need it more than anything, Lord. There's days I need you to help me. If you would be my Simon, maybe get under it a little bit. Strengthen me, Lord. 
strengthen each and every one of us. I pray, God, that you would help us carry our cross as we deny ourselves, carry our cross, and follow after you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. I'm gonna read all your comments. I'm sorry I didn't read them earlier because I had my glasses off. I can't see that far. I hope you're having a good morning. Listen, take your cross. It's not decoration, it's proclamation. Tell a hurt and dying world what Jesus has done for you, how he has saved you, sanctified you, and is redeeming you, and he's coming back for you, my friends. I love you guys. Have a great day. Don't forget about the concert tonight. I'll see you at church tonight as we worship together. Hallelujah. See you tonight.